and if we click yes, it will turn the engines and turn the boat around and point us in that direction, taking us to the point that we selected. For many boaters on the water, if you've ever used an autopilot system, then you know how amazing these units can be. Whether you're a day cruiser, fisherman, sailor, or island hopper, having an autopilot on your boat can 10x your enjoyment on the water. We've included the autopilot as one of our favorite features to have on boats that are bigger than 24 feet. And if you haven't seen that video, then you'll want to check that out to see the other great features that you would want if you are boating in that range. But when it comes to autopilot systems, there are really a ton of different options depending on what kind of boat you have, the engine package, and type of steering that is equipped on the boat, whether that be mechanical, hydraulic, or power-assisted hydraulic steering. Now the autopilot basically just takes over the steering and then relies on GPS readings to stay on track. Before we go into how it operates, let's talk briefly about the main components that it has to have in order to function properly. It will need a way to control the steering. If that is on a hydraulic or power steering setup, then it will use a pump that is placed in the steering system in between the engines and the boat's steering wheel. Then it will need a compass to allow the system to know where it is and what direction it is pointing in, as well as a reference point to know in what direction the engines are or the rudder is pointing in. This will allow the system to know in what direction the boat is going to go in based on the direction of these components. Then finally, the autopilot will need a way for us to control it, and for it to be able to control these other items being either the display, a central hub or computer, or a remote control. Some systems will have a variation of all these components and then on a tiller style which are used for sailboats, all of these components are built into the unit that will attach to the tiller handle which controls the rudder and somewhere on either side of the cockpit to hold it in place. In the most basic setup, it will just be an all-inclusive unit that will go in and out, steering the rudder, keeping the boat on a specific heading or direction. So the best way that I can explain how it keeps you on course is by saying that it basically uses checkpoints as you move through the water. In a diagram, it would look like this. Let's say that the boat is here and we want to go in this specific direction. If we use what is called a heading hold, the autopilot relies on the compass to see what direction the boat is going and it will hold the steering on that course as it goes through the water. The unit will take a reference or where the boat is located, then in a specific time or distance or whatever the unit is using for its intervals or checking, it will then take another reference of the boat. Using these two references, it will correct the steering of the boat to keep it on course. As you move through the water, creating more and more checkpoints for it to use as a reference to continue to correct its path. This is why autopilots are not as accurate when you are moving slowly through the water, compared to having a little more speed to your course, where the autopilot can have more checkpoints or references to determine your course, whether you be on course or off course. Basically constantly correcting the steering of the boat to keep the boat headed in the specific direction that you have set the unit to take you in. This is why whenever an autopilot is first installed on the boat, it needs to be taken out and calibrated to allow the compass and units to get all the data that they need to make sure it can calculate how to correct the boat's path. It's understandable that the tiller model autopilot for a sailboat has a reference based on the rudder of the boat, but the way the unit functions when it is connected to a hydraulic steering unit most of the time will not have this rudder reference. So it will use the computer to create what is called a virtual rudder reference that is taken in when the unit is calibrated, letting the system know how far the engines will turn from left to right and where the middle is. This will allow the system to know how to control the engines in order to direct the path of the boat. As the boat is traveling through the water, it will continue to reference the previous points that it has recorded in order to continue with this constant correction of the boat's path.
Then with the addition of other components in the system, you can also have the navigation feature that will help and take you to a specific position. For example, if we pick a waypoint from our chart plotter, then after selecting it, we can then request the unit to navigate to it, which will give us a couple of different options depending on what brand and system that you have in your boat or what you are working with. If you are working with a Garmin unit like this, then you have to select Go To and then after hitting Go To, we can select on the autopilot display the Mode button and you will see that there is now a navigation selection available. If we select that, it will tell us that it is going to change our course in order to navigate the boat to the waypoint we selected and if we click Yes, it will turn the engines and turn the boat around and point us in that direction taking us to the point that we selected. Now when we do this from say a standstill, sometimes it will take a little while before the boat finally straightens out and gets set perfectly on course and dialed in. But remember, it will be making those constant corrections as we travel through the water to get the boat correctly on course. If we choose to stop navigation while underway with the autopilot from the chart plotter, then the unit will simply turn into the heading hold feature from the navigation feature. This will vary a little bit in user ability depending on the brand and setup you are working with. And then if we choose the route to selection, it will not give us this navigation feature because the chart plotter is just routing to the point. But this is the basic overview and components that are needed to have an awesome autopilot feature on your boat. Now don't forget to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and visit us at bornagainboating.com. Let us know if you have an autopilot on your boat in the comments section below and check out some of our other videos. Thank you all for hanging out with us this week and we look forward to seeing you next week.